أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطاهرين The last thing that we spoke about was in the issue of if you have shak in the kuriyah of water and whether or not the contact with najasa makes that water najis or not you can refer to istishab istishab in the sense that you go back to its previous state if that is not going to work then what comes second in line after istishab is qaidatul tahara the principle of purity that everything is pure unless you have certainty of its najasa now here there are counter arguments and we said all up there are five counter arguments against this theory and we have spoken about two of them today will we we will be sharing another two on why you are not able to use the um, principle of tahara to justify uh, the purity of the water at the time of contact with najasa we've mentioned uh, uh, principle number one and principle number one was the umumiya of the evidence, the generality of the evidence, and principle number two was the qa'id al mirzaiyya the mirzai principle. Now we're going to discuss argument number three. With argument number three, it is called qa'idatul muqtadi wal mani' Now I sent you all the English text um, which was translated by Dr. Ali Al-Samail and of course um, there are a lot of things that need to be uh, explained within the text and looking at the text in itself might not allow you to understand what the purpose is. So we need to dissect this uh, in detail to see how it is. This is when we come to understand what al-fiqh al-istidlali is. Before, we were saying uh, water, you've got pure water, you have mixed water, you have contact, you have najasa, you have kur. Now, of course, that looks like simple basic fiqh and ahkam. Now we're going into arguments that stand against these common fiqhi views. And these counter arguments will also be argued against. So it's going to be a battle of this side, then that side, then coming back to this side, then maybe sometimes even going back to that side. So we need to be very, very patient because it's going on a lot. I'm also going to make sure that we don't go too much into usul al-fiqh because that will take um, a lot of time as well. Okay. Now, what does this qaida say? This qaida is based on understanding that for the principle of causality, for qaida tul for the principle of causality, there are different things that need to occur. If the illa if the complete cause um, is to uh, result in a, a complete effect, right? Like for example, you need to have the cause, you need to have the condition, the shart, you need to have the adamul man absence of an obstacle, and lastly you need to have the mu'id here it says 
Mu'id, and Mu'id means those things that are prepared. For example, in order for there to be a fire, right, in order for there to be nar, in order for there to be heat, in order for there to be heat, what do you need? Number one, you need fire. Number two, you need contact with the, the uh, fire. Sorry, you need fire to have contact with wood, right? And number three, you need to make sure that the wood is not wet. And number four, you need something that will bring about the preparation of all of these things, and that is a lighter, an ignition, right? A match so all these four things if they were to compete to combined together you will have harara you will have heat without them if you have fire and you have wet wood it's not going to happen if you have dry wood and you don't have for example contact it's not going to happen if you have fire and you have the um, dryness and you have that which ignited the fire but you don't have contact the heat is not going to happen so you need to make sure that you keep these two words in mind number one is muqtadi and here is al -mani'. of course as far as illiya is concerned Right? Here it means Adamul Man, the absence of an obstacle. And that is that the wood is not wet. That the wood is not wet. Right? But we're, what we're going to talking, be talking about is Al Man. Right? Now let's apply that to the argument against. The argument against Qaidatul Tahara as far as Korea is concerned, right? Let's have a look at when we know that coming into contact with something that is Najis will lead to Najasa, right? So there needs to be that contact. If you have water that is kur, that is going to be the mani for the contacted water becoming najis. Right? So, here again we have the example of cause, the muqtadi, which is the reason. And in our argument, in our case, it is what's happening to um, the water. Number two, you have the shart. And without that shart, that thing itself is not going to occur. Causality is not going to occur. And also, you need to make sure that there is no obstacle. With the issue of mulaqat and kurriya, you have yaqeen in one thing, and that is in the state of there being water, not had, it should be hand, right? You have yaqeen in one thing and shak in another thing. You have yaqeen in water coming onto your hand, right? But now you have shak in, is this bandage on my finger preventing water from contacting my hand? What do I use here? I use qa'idatul muqtadi wal mani' right and that is the cause which is the pouring of water onto the hand and al mana is there might be a 
likelihood, a possibility of there being an obstacle that will prevent water from getting to my skin. That means I am not able to um, get onto the uh, case of my hand becoming tahir, my hand becoming pure, right? So this is an example that we're giving to make things clear and then we're going to apply it to our arguments. Okay? So, yaqeen sabiq and shak tariq. Shak that is just happening right now. Previous yaqeen and there is shak that's happening right now. What is the muqtadi? The muqtadi is that there is water being poured, that there is water there, right? Here the, the mana is my shak in there being contact made between the water and my finger. What do I do? What do I refer back to? I refer back to the previous state of yaqeen that I had. And that is, of course, when it comes to al-muqtadi wal mana, it can't be that way, right? And that means that the cause did take effects. In the case of, let me change the, the slide. In the case of, please make sure that you remember this argument. In the case of um, Korea, in the case of Korea, all right, well, let me, let's apply it to this argument and then we'll understand. In the case of Korea, I have the contacts occurring between Najasa and water. I have, all right, I, I'm just going to say this. I have the contact, I have the contact occurring between the Najasa and the water. Korea is supposed to prevent Korea, it being Kur, is supposed to prevent that water becoming Najis. I have shek that this water is Kur or not Kur. What do I do? Based on Qa'idatul Muqtadi wal mani, I cannot assume it being Kurriya and therefore it must be Najis. Again, let me repeat. There is contact and that contact is certain of between Najasa and water. I have shek. Is that water kur or not kur? The muqtadi is there. Yani the cause is there 100%. The mani' from allowing that cause to become effective, right? There's shak there. If I say I don't have shak, I'm 100% sure, then of course it would be adamul mani'. But here the mani' is there and that is shak in the kurriya of the water. In this case, I must assume the state of certainty and therefore the water cannot be considered to be tahir. Right? Let's have a look at um, this diagram. If the muta'alliq for yaqeen and shak, right? Yani that thing that you are applying it to is in the same essence and time you refer to the qa'idatul yaqeen. If the muta'alliq, yani that thing that you are, are, are discussing or arguing about, is exactly the same in essence but not in time, then you go back to qa'idatul istishab. But if the muta'alliq is different between yak between the muta'alliq is different between shak 
and the essence then you refer back to prince the principle of muqtadi wal mani and that means that if we have exist a doubt in the existence of a barrier from the water reaching from uh, from there being contact we say that the cause exists right and the obstacle is not there right the obstacle in my and mine is not there now here there's an important point that i was reading about as an explanation and it says it is similar to istisha because it is it's based on shak and yaqeen but it's different in the case of shak in that in it in that the case of shak is essentially different to the case of yaqeen right in that the case of shak is in its essence the different to the case of yaqeen Whereas with istishab, the essence of shak and the essence of yaqeen is exactly the same thing, but two different times. And that's why you say, I have a previous yaqeen of wudu. Now I have shak. So one hour ago, I had yaqeen of wudu. Now... I have shak after one hour. In essence, it's the same thing, and that is wudu before and wudu now. Wudu before in yaqeen, wudu now in shak. So here, that difference in the muta'alliq, يعني, in that which I am applying it to the case to, is in wudu. Not in its essence, but in the time. In qa'ida, qa the principle of cause and obstacle it, it's different in essence. One is qalil and one is kurriya. One is qalil and one is kurriya. So essentially they are different. So the argument, again, let me repeat one last time. The argument says that the argument says that with kurriya, if you have shak in kur, you refer back to the principle of tahara, and that is everything is tahir for you. The counter argument is no, it's not tahir. And the reason why it's not tahir is because the cause is there. And the cause which is there, the illa that is which is there, is mulaqat of najasa and water. And there is something that is preventing and being an obstacle, and that is shak in whether this water is kur or not. Based on qa'idatul muqtadi wal mani', you cannot say that the water is tahir. Okay? Now, what is the argument against this all right here sorry here's some more explanation let's read this together whenever you have the cause and you doubt the effects and the reason for the doubt is doubt in the obstacle in this case the cause occurs and the obstacle should be ignored right and that is you can't say that it is core the muqtadi here is contact of the jasa with water the man which prevents the reaction of what's going to happen is kurriya and the muqtada right is that reaction that reaction going to happen so with this water that we have we know that there is contact but as far as the effect is concerned did it happen or not the effect yani 
What's the effect here? The reaction. Yani what's the reaction? Yani the najasa, the infial, which is the najasa. Does it happen? Does it become najis? The answer is yes. It becomes najis. Why? Because we have doubt in the obstacle that would not allow that reaction to happen. But I have doubt that that's going to not allow it. And this principle says we ignore the doubt in the obstacle. What's the reply to this? Very simple. The reply is there's no evidence for this. Right? You cannot use this argument before istishab. You need to use this argument after istishab. And we argued that istishab is valid in this case, number one. As far as istishab, we are talking about istishab of tahara and non-tahara. We are not arguing, we are not arguing about istishab of kurriya or non-kurriya. Right? Yes. In the sughra of the argument, in the minor premise of the argument, right, there is shek in the kurriya, but in the major premise of the principle, right, that is, of course, rejected. And as Sheikh Al Irawani says, there is no basis to this argument. It hasn't been confirmed by um, any anyone. And also, rational people. And also, there's no textual evidence to this as well hasn't been mentioned in like, for example, hadith or anywhere else. And therefore, this argument of al-muqtadi, of the cause and the obstacle, cannot be used. Argument number four is to refer to the, to refer to the principle of is this hab of al adamul abadi now please remember what is this hab means and that is to refer back to the previous states adam adam means eternal uh, sorry adam means non existence the absence azali means eternal Right? And basically, this argument of istishab al adam al azali is, uh, is spoken about in usul al fiqh. It's spoken about in usul al fiqh, and what it, basically what it means is it's never happened. That particular thing never happened. And I have to refer back to that particular thing that never happened. There was no. Um, Tahara, for example, in the first place, right? Sorry, there was no Korea in the first place, and therefore there is no Tahara. The example is I have a friend, and I have doubts. Does my friend have a baby or not? I have a friend and I have doubts. Does my friend have a baby or not? What do I do in this case? I refer back to istishab, to the previous sta states of what was my friend's condition or state in? Was he a father or not? The answer, he, he wasn't. And it means that from the beginning, my friend did not have a baby. Al Adam al Azali. So, from whenever I, as long as I remember, he didn't have a baby. And therefore, I say he is not a father because I am referring back to the state of him not having a baby let me repeat 
he he this friend i am doubting whether he has a child or not i know that he never had a child i do istishab now i ha i i have doubt as to whether a child exists or not i do istishab that he does not exist now water before it existed before water existed it didn't exist right Be there was no such thing before that it did not exist now water exists and i have doubt does this water have a description of Korea or not what do i do i go back to the previous states and that is that didn't exist because Korea is something that came into being it's something that came into being yani it had an absence and then it came into being it was non-existent and then it came into being and when i have doubt about something like that i refer back to the previous states and that is my certainty of it not existing it being absent eternally right because korea is something new and created so i go back to the its eternal states we have now what it is but with korea we refer back to the state of al adam al azali okay let's read um the explanation adhering to the previous state of the eternal non-existence that's what it's called and an example a law here is if any water comes into contact with najis the infial the reaction is that it becomes najis that's the general law then i have a khususi and that is i am specializing the law i'm making boundary to that law right and that is that core water does not react with najasa right so here the general subject is made up of two parts mut, mu, mu, the mulaqat or the contacts and the water being small amounts and that leads to the infial the reaction when i have istishab it says that you are able to apply istishab to one side and not to the other all right in usul al-fiqh this is this subject is studied and that is the jarayan al-istishab in compound cases in subjects that have more than one side some uh, ulama of usul accept that some ulama of usul don't accept jarayan al-istishab fil mawdu'at al-murakkaba so here let's read this subject of the reaction is based on being qalil and also there being contact i have yaqeen that there is that the water is qalil why based on istishab al adam al azali but something that is um occurring now i can't say something that ca came into existence that came into being because it doesn't have the eternal non-existence because it has that it didn't exist before i refer back to the previous case now This means that we are able to use istishab al adam al Excuse me. 
Alhamdulillah shukr. We are able to use istishabu al-adam al-azali to say that qaleel is still there. If you have the text in front of you, it says here, it says that passing of on of impurity is compound, right? And we said jariyan al-istishab fil mawdu'at al-murakkabah. And made up of the paucity of the water having, having contact with Najasa, and you're certain about that, right? And the second part, okay, the first part is infial, and the second part is. Mulaqat. The first part is infial, right? And the second part is mulaqat, right? With the infial, you know about that through istishab, and with the other side, right? You know it by your own wujdan, as it says. Right? Common sense, as it says in the text. And therefore, because of that, you, through istishab al-adam al-azali, you are not able to say that the water is kur. The counter-argument to this is, yes, it's a good argument, especially um, the argument of istishab al-adam al-azali and later on inshallah we're going to uh, uh, explain another kind of istishab istishab al-adam al-na'ti right in description of something right but the argument here is not applicable it is baseless according to a sheikh al-irawani right Which means, sorry, according to Sheikh al-Irawani, he says, this would be valid if we accept, this would be valid if we accept the principle of um, eternal non-existence. The principle of istishab of the eternal non-existence. Right? Here, al-Akhund al-Khurasani, and Marhuma said they accept it. However, a Shaykh al Naini does not accept Qaidat Istishab al Adam al Azali. As for Shahid al Sadr and some others, they say that the argument is applicable only in the minor premise of this case. Okay, number five, argument number five, inshallah, we will speak about that next week. We will also be starting with explaining the amount of kur and the arguments and the counter arguments in the calculation for the amount of kur. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin.